So at this point in time, I'd like to welcome to the stage the interim president and CEO of h and Kevin Carey. Kevin? This is how legends are made. Well, good afternoon and, and thank you. And, and Lee, first, uh, let me congratulate you and the Hunter family uh, for 35 years of bringing this conference on for the industry. Uh, and I'm sure if you're like me and, and our team at HLA, uh, if you find yourself in the middle of March, there, there's usually about two things you're doing. Uh, one, you're filling out your NCAA brackets. And number two, you're making your plans to come here to Atlanta for the Hunter conference. Uh, so let's uh, jump right into it here and there's, Couple things we want to do to set the stage for the conversation we have today. First is to take a look at the operating environment that the industry is facing. And there are tremendous complexities and cross currents that your business is facing. At a global level, we've got challenges and conflict in Eastern Europe, uh, in the Middle East, uh, growing tensions with China. Uh, you continue to face in your business demand mix challenges and changes between leisure, business, group, international business can vary. And we know there are a numerous amount of profitability challenges, whether those are wage-driven, interest rates, insurance is certainly part of the dialogue. All of these uh, against a backdrop where now four years on from COVID, continue to see workforce-related challenges. We're still down about 200,000 positions from 2019 levels. And overall, while there started to be some transactional levels that we're seeing, these conditions and these forces overall, we believe are suppressing transaction levels. I'd love to tell you from a political and a legislative context that things are easier or less complex there, but we know that's not the case. Um, in Congress and in Washington, the Congress has an approval rating of about 15% right now. I think it touched bottom in recent polling at about 13% last October. We know we're facing a complex election season. At a state level, 37 states 75% of the state legislatures are in session right now, and we're seeing tremendous changes in the composition and makeup of the elected official base, uh, whether that's in Washington or at a state level. Despite all that, and with all those uncertainties and challenges, this industry remains an economic powerhouse. HLA released its State of the Industry report just a little over 30 days ago. In that, you see some of the key headlines that hotels will directly employ more than 2.1 million workers who are paying 123 billion in wages and salaries. That's up about 21% since 2019 levels. Cumulative and aggregate guest spending at hotels is expected to hit a record this year, approaching 760 billion. And on a combined basis, that'll generate a record of approaching 85 billion in tax revenues. Against this backdrop, HLA, my colleagues uh, and our colleagues in the foundation continue to execute and fulfill our mission. You know the work we're doing on behalf of the industry. We serve as advocates for representing the industry and in trying to forge responsible public policies in Washington and in state houses around the country. We work vigorously to promote the industry's economic potential its mobility, what it represents in wages and opportunity for workers to enter the industry. And we also play an important role as a convening entity, bringing together all segments of the industry to align around a core set of initiatives and programs that can advance this great industry. We've also been on a significant transformational path over the last decade. We've expanded our reach. AHLA predominantly was a national Washington-based trade association for many years. We've added staff. We've grown our reach and impact. We're working more with our partner state associations. We've grown our resources through growing the membership base, raising our, our relationships with the state partners associations, and growing our team at all levels and with the foundation as well. And what that's allowed us to do is to have a greater impact in working on critical issues for the industry. Shaping this impact over this transformational period have been leaders of all segments of the industries, brands, owners, asset managers, service providers and suppliers, the men and women that you see here who've helped to lead the industry over this time frame, and their many, many colleagues who participate in our committees and other activities are really essential and are really represent a core strength for our industry. 
We've also been led by dedicated industry executives and staff leaders, and I've had the great opportunity to work with both Catherine and Chip over this period of time as well as HLA has grown its impact. We've got a strategic plan that we've been focused on since 2022 when a task force of industry leaders came together to chart out those issues that we felt over the next five years were gonna be the areas that the industry needed to concentrate its attention and resources and focus on. This plan really covers the entire enterprise, not only the association from an advocacy perspective, but also importantly, the great work that our foundation team does as well. These four top issues with the addition of franchising that we've added as we've pivoted, recognizing the need to focus on this important area will continue to serve as our guiding light in the areas that will impact over the next second half of our plan over the next two and a half years. So let's jump into some of the issues in particular. There's a lot happening at the federal level that our federal team headed by Shirag Shah is leading. And let's go to one right away here. On March the 8th, the team scored a key victory when a Texas-based judge ruled to block the National Labor Relations Board's joint employer rule. This issue took away the question around confusion, disruption, and cost for the industry and helped to protect the franchise model that's important to so many in the industry. Our team is also working in Washington to try to advance on the Senate side a bipartisan tax package, and, and let me say that again, a bipartisan tax package. You don't hear that oftentimes uh, these days in, in Washington, but this element and these details have important bottom line opportunities and savings for the industry. We've also worked aggressively over numerous years to expand legislation and issues that help address and expand the workforce, as we know that that's such a significant industry issue. Um, we're going to continue to be at it and working to expand both the H-2B visas and other legislation that would have a beneficial impact on allowing you to grow your workforce to meet the demand that you're facing and seeing and trying to support in your properties. At a state and local level, our team is equally as, as engaged in working on significant issues. We know the pace of issues at a state and local level can move much more rapidly than they do in Washington. Um, our team has grown. We work in a collaborative way with our partner state associations across all states to ensure we have a unified front and the resources to be effective as an industry as a whole and to speak with one voice. In Florida, we've made numerous attempts over the years and have achieved some real progress recently in legislation that's passed the Senate and is now moving on to the governor that would make some meaningful strides in leveling the playing field around short-term rentals. We've seen the benefits of that and like legislation in New York City and other jurisdictions and we'll continue to work with our team to make this progress in Florida and in other markets around the U.S. In Utah, importantly, our teams achieved a victory by blocking a 1.5% increase in the transient room tax. This was conceived and dedicated towards providing resources to attract a major league baseball franchise to Utah. I know we're all focused on opening day, even those of us who are Mets fans, but not that level. Um, we also secured funding in that legislation and in that effort to create a short-term rental portal, portal that will allow the state to track, excuse me, to track issues uh, and non-compliance will give us a baseline uh, for future short-term rental legislation in that state. Franchising, as I mentioned with the win uh, on the joint employer issue, our team is laser focused on ensuring the franchise model remains viable and that we're defending it in areas and states where legislation is being introduced that has the potential to invite government into our business model. That's not something the industry is gonna benefit from and we're gonna to continue to vigorously work to defeat legislation in New Jersey and we believe that's good for all segments of the industry. HLA represents all segments of the industry but this effort in particular is one uh, that we believe we need to take a t stance on in New Jersey. There's numerous states as well that are advancing climate change uh, disclosures and requirements and the patchwork of challenges uh, and non-compliance fees is something our teams are working aggressively on with our state partners. Understanding this patchwork, understanding what the issues are, and seeing that you're not, uh, that you're not out of compliance is something that we wanna ensure that we're working collectively on so that you know what the landscape is uh, in this area that is continuing to merge with greater regularity. 
I also want to take this opportunity to highlight, uh, you're familiar with the association and the work AHLA does, but the AHLA Foundation does outstanding work uh, and we are able to take and make collective impact as an industry, advancing the workforce, and there's numerous initiatives, and I encourage you to spend some time with my colleague Anna Blue and her team. They're not only, over time, uh, reinvested $40 million in the industry's workforce, but also impacted over 40,000 individuals and employees through the Foundation's programs. The Foundation has terrific programs which are focused on the recruitment, retention and development, and advancement of our industry and its people, which is essential to the future of our industry. One area in particular that we're particularly proud of is the growth of the initiative around combating human trafficking and the introduction last year and the stand-up and the de dedicated focus so many companies and individuals have made towards creating the Survivor Fund. And, and you'll be hearing more about that from my team and our colleagues uh, over the coming days here at this conference and beyond. The message I want to leave everyone with is you've got a team that's focused on the top issues, how we're impacting our government and our business and through the foundation's efforts, our workforce. But what we really need is your involvement. Enroll in Hotels Act. It's easy to do, it's quick, it gives you an opportunity to have a voice on these issues, whether in Washington or at a state and local level. Attend our regional events. It's an opportunity to network and connect with your industry peers and have a conversation about those key issues at a local level. Our forward event is now doing regional events as well and had a terrific one here in Atlanta just recently that attracted over 300 industry representatives to participate in that conversation about how to advance women in leadership roles in the industry. Forward will be convening in Chicago in about 30 days, a little more, uh, for its annual in-person conference, and we're excited about that potential. And we've got ways to engage across a number of functions. Uh, whether you're an owner or a general manager, please encourage your colleagues and your peers back at a property level. It's an opportunity for them to learn more about the industry's issues, have a voice, and get engaged in the work we do. And certainly our trade show and conference that we're going to be convening for year two um, in San Antonio in October uh, is another means of engagement uh, overall. Personally, uh, I'm honored to serve in this interim capacity, but I've got a fantastic team at HLA and the foundation uh, that not only inspires, but also I see their commitment and dedication to this industry uh, in each and every way that they serve across the industry segments. But make no mistake about it, our greatest strength is you, you all, our members. Your involvement and your support for AHLA is critical. We value what you do for the industry and it really gives us the sustaining support to go out and advocate and advance the industry on your behalf. So thank you for your time today. Have a great rest of the conference and we'll look forward to seeing you along the way. Appreciate it.